Uh, the influencer model. This is perhaps one of the most important parts of your organizational change plan because it really helps you to get clear on what you're planning to do. What is a change? Um, the reason I'm, I'm up here on this particular page is that I want you to take a look at this uh, visual here. And we're starting at the far right hand side because that's important because ultimately these are the goals. This is the results that you're working towards. Um, whether it's the creation of the makerspace, ePortfolio, one-to-one, -one, uh, mobile learning, uh, blended learning of some sort, station rotation, these types of things, your results have to be related to your innovation plan. Okay, And the result has to be clear, well-defined, something that can be achievable, and something that can also be measured. Once you're clear on your results, you then identify the two to three, ideally three, vital behaviors that will get you to your results. So if we use a guinea worm example, the result is the eradication of the guinea worm. The vital behaviors are, number one, filtering the water. Number two, stopping people from putting their hands and feet, their extremities in the water. And number three, holding each other accountable, right? With those three vital behaviors and six sources of influence which follow, um, the World Health Organization was able to virtually eradicate the guinea worm. So again, the result is eradication of the guinea worm, but three vital behaviors, right? Filtering water, stop, stopping the extremities being put in the water, holding each other accountable. The six sources of influence, which you're going to focus on next week, but I want to give you a context for, come into play. For example, with the vital behavior of filtering the water, in your personal ability, this section number two, this is where you would do something like you would train the people to filter the water. Because if you're filtering the water and the actual filter drops into the water container, well, then the larvae are going to spread into the water. So training addresses the issue of professional development. If you're dealing with an educational setting, addresses the issue of do the people have the ability to do those things. The personal motivation is where you encourage people to identify, identify things like their own own why and the purpose and the goal behind these types of things. The social motivation, and you're, we're going to de be dealing with this a lot more significantly in the next week, deal with things like modeling, peer influence, uh, positive deviance, guiding things, having um, a uh, social um, influencer actually uh, make a claim about the positive benefits of these certain things. The social ability component are things like the <clears throat> collaborative tools, the newsletters, those types of things. Pers a structural, um, uh, personal structural motivation are things like the personal um, achievement, gene day, some type of reward, these types of activities that will actually contribute to moving people forward to working towards achieving these goals, right? The social behavior that I talked about in this middle section three and four directly dealt with the notion of holding each other accountable. So these six sources of influence are extremely important. The last one here is the structural ability. This is things like the Wi-Fi infrastructure. This is things like the actual filters, if we go back to the um, guinea worm example. So again, you're, we're going to deal with this a little bit more. But for this week, the first week, what you're looking to do is you're looking to identify the results you want to achieve the three vital, vital behaviors, and who is going to be involved, who are the organizational influencers. I'd also encourage you to identify how those results uh, will be measured as well. Those are the things you submit. These three items, results, how you're going to measure them, the vital behaviors, who the influencers are. Simple Point Farm, send that, email that to me, CC uh, Creighton, or CC the teaching assistant, and um, then we'll be on the right track, okay? And I'll take a look at that and get back to you uh, in terms of whether or not you are on the right track. So let's take a look at a couple other things I want to bring to your attention. So um, again, going back to that program mapping page, this is where everything happens in terms of finding your assignment examples, your reading lists, all those wonderful things. So with the assignment examples, um, Actually, before we get to the assignment examples, I want to bring to your attention the tips page, okay? And the reason I bring to, uh, the uh, EDL uh, D 5304 perspectives or tips page, as I like to call it, is that with the influencer model, I want to bring it to your attention that the four effective ways to find and test valid behaviors is linked on this page. But there's also a post here about great teachers or leaders aim for, influ for influence, not control. I'd strongly encourage you to read this particular short post, perhaps read the uh, uh, 
article that it was based on. And this will really give you a context or help understand why influence is so much more important than control. So keep that in mind. But let's take a look at how do you actually find and test those vital behaviors? Okay, um, I'm, I'm not going to go through this word by word, but obviously one of the most important things that you need to do is make sure your results are crystal clear. The fuzzier you are, the more vague you are in your results, the more difficult it's going to be to identify the vital behaviors. And the results have to be something that can be done in the same way that the vital behavior is something that can be done, but it's something big that is bigger. So, for example, um, a result, if I want to use a weight loss example, a focused and measurable goals, I will lose 40 pounds and 20% body fat by May of 2019. There you go. There's my goal. Okay. That is much clearer than saying, oh, I'd love to lose some weight. Okay. So the reason that it's so important to get uh, precise is that then you can identify those things that are going to make the difference. And so the vital behaviors in losing weight is, guess what? Monitoring what you eat, recording what you eat. Increasing your activity, recording your activity. These combinations, right? Increasing activity, eating better, recording what you eat, recording activity, those types of vital behaviors. I've given you four, five vital behaviors. Those can lead to success in terms of this goal of losing weight. So keep those things in mind, right? So vital behaviors. Take a look at this this example. It identifies what a vital behavior would be and what the result uh, what the desired result is what you're working towards. So it works it backwards. Now, when you're looking at vital behaviors, we ask you to t look at things like notice the obvious. What are people doing that obviously is confusing? Um, what is that crucial moment where things can go one of two ways. So if you're using, if you want to reduce the incidence of uh, spread of um, uh, virus and bacteria within a hospital setting, you want to get people to wash their hands, right? Well, at the key moment that a doctor comes into the room, is there everything in place where he or she can wash their hands, right? That's a crucial moment. You know, what are the people who are doing those positive things doing? What are those positive deviants doing, right? And then, you know, what are those stubborn cultural norms that get in the way? These these little search strategies are designed to help you identify what those vital behaviors would be. Don't make a mistake and spend all your time writing about this. These are tools to help you identify your vital behaviors. Don't include them in your example. You can. It's You're not going to be penalized, but I, I wouldn't spend too much time. They're tools to help you find those things. But here's the key that I had mentioned in the meeting. If you could do one thing, that one action that you must do that would change everything and give you the result that you desire, what would that be? Okay, and after that one thing, well, what's the next thing, and what's the next thing, right? That's the, that's a, a focus that you want to take a look at. So when you're testing your vital behaviors, here's some really important things. Can a person go and do it, right? Do these actions actually stop um, the self-defeating or escalating behaviors? Do these actions start a new reaction, a new behavior that leads to a good result? Um, and then what particular value is being lived? So again, take a look at this example. It's designed to help you clarify where you're, where you're going. Um, again, examples page. Here's some examples that I want to point to of what previous students have done. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to just deal with these in the order that they're they're in, um, and I'll talk about each one. So if we take a look at uh, Deanna Teal's example here, uh, wonderful introduction. She makes a connection to her innovation plan, which is what you need to do. Makes a connection to why, what, and how, and so on and so forth. Wonderful lead-in strategies, and then she's got um, visuals that she's built to help clarify what she's doing. So I'll let you take a closer look at this. But the important thing that we have here is is that her desired result is clear she's got a date it's it's very attainable so she's going to implement maker spaces um, on each campus so she's actually implementing multiple maker spaces within her district okay by a certain time okay to do that she's going to provide opportunities of vital behaviors um, or opportunities will provide for leaders to gain skills and grow the growth mindset needed to create the maker space in the library so she's dealing with the mindset the way of thinking first and she's then she's looking at getting the people involved in playing around in the makerspace and then that students and teachers lead makerspace collaborative activities right so 
Um, these are vital behaviors that will help her to impl implement her perspectives. And then when we take a look at the six sources of influence, you'll see how these are connected to the vital behaviors. I'm not going to go into too much detail. So this is a wonderful example. References are in place. Um, you know, you can click on these and they will expand and you can see them in a broader context, right? So it makes it easy for people to read. One of the drawbacks with this is don't center all the text on the page. Okay, very important that you don't do that. Don't center the text on the page. Sometimes when you're working with some of these pictograph or these uh, infographic creation tools, they just simply automatically center the text. So just be careful about that. This is a good example of somebody who's pulled all the pieces together um, and made a connection to, the info, to her innovation plan. Another example. Another visual representation, okay? A um, little bit less of a, of a write-up. You've got a little bit here, pulls all of these ideas together. Um, but the key thing, that again, that we look at are what's the results, okay? Here's a goal. By a certain time, grade four students will develop a new portfolio, utilize it, minimum uh, reflection uh, once a week. Okay, so very, very measurable goal, right? So the teachers are going to be modeling and administrators modeling e-portfolio use in their own. Ah, teachers and administrators use an e-portfolio. They're going to actually come together and develop ideas of how students can actually do the reflection. And they're going to actually share and model success stories and, and things that are working at the regular meetings. Okay, so some, some of a social dynamic, social accountability. So when we look at the six sources of influence, you'll see professional development activities, ideas of how people can sort of create their own why, what, and how, benefits, understanding why this is important, social dynamic, modeling, leaders doing this, this is an example, opinion leaders lead this direction, you know, um, meetings where this happens, um, tools that, that are identified that can make this happen, Wi-Fi, different resources, technology, so on and so forth, um, shared access, days off, um, you know, awards, digital badges, you know, structural components. So these are all the things that will help lead to the successful realization of the vital behaviors. Looking at another example here, another visual representation. Um, again, we've got a little bit of a lead-in, connection to the innovation plan, big goal. Yeah, 50% of teachers will create student-centered learning environments. So this person is actually leading uh, their technology coach, and so they're leading uh, a blended learning initiative. Okay, so that's the goal. Half the teachers are going to do that. Well, to do that, they're going to plan and implement something, at least one outline, uh, one online modules a week. Okay, so very measurable, can be done. And during the meetings, they collaborate and they work together. And then administrators are actually going to utilize some blended learning um, activities so that um, the whole organization. So this is addressing not just the people at the grassroots, but also asking the leaders come in and, and come involved. Measurements are identified. Great, it's there. Looking at the uh, influencer model, again, so six sources of influence, personal motivation, um, why? Addressing that big why for personal motivation. Yeah, you know, PD opportunities, great, wonderful. Social influence, modeling, holding each other accountable, social media posting, yeah, you're right, social ability. Yes, a group, discussion board, meetings, uh, structural motivation, digital badging, you know, get get to have their work uh, highlighted. And then, you know, the typical technology is in place. Um, so again, another example of a, a really good um, implementation. And um, the references pointing to the influencer model uh, are in place, All right? So um, this is another example of the influencer model. And this is, again, a simple lead-in. Um, embedding with a script document. And this one isn't as visually appealing as the other ones, but the, a lot of the components are in place. Um, and there's a little bit more verbiage in terms of who's involved, and that's fine too, but the vital behaviors are clearly identified, right? Um, and similarly, um, the six sources of influence are clearly identified. What's missing here is the references, okay? Um, also, um, the uh, results could have been a little bit more clearly defined. Also, 90% of teachers using something, that's a lot. Um, I don't know if you can reach those goals. So we're on the right track with that. Um, another example, uh, Patrick Reed's example. Um, this is from earlier on. So this is an example of implementation of a one-to-one -one with iPads, right? Clearly identified 
um, what the what the goal was. Well, it didn't really clearly identify what the goal was. Identify the vital behaviors. Now, here's an example of people spending too much time on things like noticing the obvious, the crucial moments, positive deviance, uh, culture busters. Now, these are useful ideas to address in terms of identifying your vital behaviors, but I don't know if they're beneficial uh, in terms of moving these ideas forward. So this is an example of uh, that uh, of a student did relatively well, but it isn't as easy to follow and it isn't as as clear. Um, also, this isn't that easy to read. Um, in some contexts, it isn't, right? Um, and then we go back to an earlier example um, um, from a few years ago, almost three years ago now. Um, again, measurements, are, they're talking about what their big goal is, but they didn't really make it as clear as it could be. Well, here it is. You, you have to look for it, but ideally you want to identify what that result or what that goal is. You want to identify your vital behaviors. Again, they spent too much time focusing on those in the obvious. There we go. We finally get to the vital behaviors. So I'd encourage you not to spend so much time, um, you know, getting to the punch. Right? You want to get clear on those vital behaviors. And then we have the six sources of influence. Um, the table isn't as clear uh, as it could be like some of the other ones, but it is clear enough. A uh, bit of a write-up. Um, wonderful video provides the context, and we've got the resources in place. So again, we've got a couple of examples of students who spent a bit too much time focusing on things that weren't necessary. But hopefully I've given you some examples of what you want to do and, and how you want to be careful about moving your ideas forward with the influencer model.